All the things are bad. There are no good things. I bite and I cut everything I need. No one clutches their purses when they're in a room alone with me. And I can drive for any neighborhood I please. At any hour, and the police don't do a thing. So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I got everything I need. I'm a guy getting paid more than a girl with a degree. And I can walk down the streets after dark, no one wants to rape me. And I can get a girl pregnant and just as easily flee. Just like my straight white male dad did to me. So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I've got all the luck I need. I've got a pile of broken mirrors and I'm walking under ladders and I'm spilling tons of salt, but to me that doesn't matter because my skin and my gender and my orientation are the best things to have if you live in this nation. I recommend it highly. See a penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Shit's gonna work out for me Cause I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Hey everybody, welcome to the Intellectual Dollar Tree We usually uh, do this show live on wednesdays at 7 p.m pacific but it was hot as fuck and so now we're today we do it live on wednesday at 9 p.m pacific it's still uh 93 degrees ambient temperature in the studio and uh <clears throat> oh somebody in the chat is asking about last night's show yeah it should be up on eplex.store yeah yeah that should all be yeah if it's not up there again let me know let me know but it should be up there speaking of which you can support this project at eplex.store five dollars a month you get the patrons versions of the shows. Uh, you also get, um, I don't know, discounts on the merch. And if you are a patron member, you can, um, if you're a Patreon user, you can just use patreon.com slash echoplex. I'm a little disoriented here. Um, I'm producer Dave, and you can find me on Grinder. This week I'm joined by my favorite co host of all, or my favorite co host, n- ooh, no co host. Uh, so we're doing this uh, homo alono. which is fun, I suppose. So we're going to check in on our friends at Killette. I have uh, called them in the past Incel Esquire. I've also called them a cult. Skull Measuring Quarterly. And I don't know who Rio, Veridon- Rio Veridonier is, but they're uh, liberalism in the LGBT movement. They're trying to get the woke out of the gays, just trying to extract it from us. We'll see how this goes. Hello, everyone. My guest today is Rio Varadineer, and Rio is the editor-in-chief of the publication Queer Majority. He is a writer, editor, and I hope soon to be podcaster. Um, We have this ongoing project to do a podcast together, and I think we absolutely should do that. Rio, I think we should do... um, I I think we should have uh, an Agony Aunt podcast I think we should advise people on love and sex issues. What? I think we would be perfectly complement each other. Is this a meeting? We would cover all the bases. Well, especially you. You would cover most of the bases. Um, and I would join you on one or two of them. <laughs> I, I'm sure you could cover plenty of bases yourself. I bet neither of these people have ever been to fifth base. <laughs> Iona's first um, piece of advice, learn the tango. There's nothing sexier than that. That is absolutely correct. Um, This is going to be terrible. And uh, full disclosure, I also, um, I used to, um, I used to to work more actively for QN. I don't have time to do a lot of much work at all for them now, but I've continued to keep my 
official association and affiliation with the magazine because um I, so I don't work for this horrible publication, but I'd like to still be listed as people who might have a byline. Believe strongly in what they are doing, um, and um, so um, that's what we're going to talk about. So Rio, um, tell me a little bit about um, why this magazine was founded, and um, or what the kind of or are they talking? I thought the QM. I thought they meant kill that magazine were that you um, were hoping to address because Man, I, I, I I'm critical of myself as an interviewer sometimes but this 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 host is she's not a very good interviewer that there are a lot of um, LGBT magazines out there um, and it could not differ more dramatically than some of those magazines like for example pink news and I also know that you had um, you have a background of discovering how difficult it is to um, advocate for LGBT rights alongside people who are extremely woke and intersectional. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? It's really hard to advocate for uh, my rights uh, if the people helping me advocate for my own rights are woke and would also like to advocate for the rights of others. What a fucking nightmare. And that that has been a frustrating experience in the past. Um, actually, let's start. Let's start there. What do you think the problems are with the way in which the people who are more in the social justice left are approaching LGBT issues? Um, <clears throat> He's like, honest, well, some of them are black. Honestly, I I think it would be easier to say what they're doing right than what they're doing wrong because they're okay. doing almost everything wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> Actually, it would be like such a short list. I, I, I don't know there would be a single item on it. Um, the truth is, uh, LGBT activism is one of the great success stories of liberalism. Uh, there has almost never been a movement where a group of people um, and their associated rights went from being almost universally opposed uh, to being almost universally supported uh, and and consequent it wasn't protection. it wasn't like universally opposed to universally supported it literally flipped from 30 70 to 70 30 and over the course of about maybe 15 or 20 years at least in the united states of those rights in such a short period of time as we saw with lgbt rights so the uh the lgbt activists of the past were enormously successful and we owe a, a huge uh, debt of gratitude to them not just lgbt people but everybody because we all benefit from living in a society that's more pluralistic and tolerant and accepting of our uh, brothers and sisters who may not happen to be straight um what happened though is there was always this debate um all along even early um lgbt activism between a liberal approach uh, which uh, basically used the same approach that succeeded with feminism and anti-racism, civil rights issues, et cetera. What? Um, Does he know that like feminists invented the mail bomb? And basically just argued for equal treatment under the law. Everybody, we're all individuals. We all deserve to be, to have our rights respected. The government should stay out of our personal lives, that sort of thing. And that's the the um, version of LGBT rights that ultimately prevailed, and a more radical approach, which comes more from the Marxist tradition um, via the Frankfurt School. Oh, here we go, fucking cultural Marxism. How how long? A fucking four minutes in, and we got cultural Marxism, which, for example, opposed same sex marriage all along on the grounds that it was uh, bourgeois. Uh, patriarchal institution that actually just needed to be torn down completely. <clears throat> I was like, uh, mean, to my take was I wasn't really, I mean, I, I, he might be talking about me. I didn't, I mean, I like, obviously I was like, oh, this is good. Uh, gay people can get married. But I also like understood that that was just one of the steps in the process of like full societal integration and acceptance. <clears throat> He would have probably painted me as being against gay marriage because that wasn't like a, a single issue for me, you know? Um, the liberal approach ultimately prevailed and we got um, same-sex marriage 
uh, we got uh, protections of LGBT people against discrimination of the same sorts we have against uh, discriminating against somebody on the basis of their sex or their race, etc. Um, but in a way, LGBT rights is a victim of its own success because mm-hmm. we succeeded so quickly that a lot of people who had dedicated their whole lives to this cause suddenly found themselves out of work, so to speak. And a lot of non-profit. Wait, the, oh, oh no! He's like once I, once we got marriage, it was over. Just stop. And and um, shift the goalposts to increasingly radical positions. In other words, basically embracing like, ironically the the movement, the ver- the part of the movement, the more extreme part of the movement that had held us back and had really been an obstacle to progress. He means uh, the queerdos, right? He means like he's separating. <clears throat> I think he's separating people out almost more by aesthetic. Uh, than by like beliefs or goals here. I think he's, he means like, he means like, oh, you know, your friend, the, st- the stockbroker, the, the lawyer, you know, your friend who could have been um, uh, Will on Will and Grace. That's who got this. Not all the fucking weirdos. Uh, all along, but they embraced it because that was yet to be done. And because it's yet to be done, uh, you could justify keeping your nonprofits open. And- We're having a real hard time. I'm having a real hard time here because I don't know what he's talking about. I'm having to infer based on like context. Reason and, and, and persuade um, well-intended people to donate you money, et cetera. The simple narrative, the way most people perceive it, is that they transition to trans issues rather than LGB issues. But um, in my opinion, that isn't actually what the mistake was. The mistake was transitioning away from liberal approach to LGBT issues and to a um, a critical, um, radical approach. Oh, fucking critical theory. They hate critical. They don't know what the fuck it is, but they hate it. They hate critical theory. Which we should have just left in the dustbin of history. Could you give me some, do, are there some particularly egregious examples that you can think of? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, um, it, the answer is going to be no, probably. I, my own experience in. Please um, name names and let's oh, take no. scalp. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can't, I, I wouldn't do that. But oh, we wouldn't uh, want to get I specific. Do. We wouldn't want to make any claims about anybody who could possibly refute my claims. Let's not get specific here. Let's ideas. I do know some people. I know some people who have written for QM who also write for mainstream or mainstream magazines. And the articles that they are that are commissioned from them um, uh, for the mainstream magazines are quite different. Um, ours are very nuanced and and moderate, or even you might even call it apolitical in a way, just kind of standing up for basic classically liberal values that's not apolitical uh, no no that's not apolitical like they, they they just when they say apolitical they they mean some version of what they think is normal right and that's not apolitical the status quo is not apolitical it's the political spectrum and were until the the recent rise of extremism on both sides there's kind of a backlash against liberalism that i'm sure you and i can talk about more broadly than LGBT issues. But yeah, I, I know, for example, I won't name names, but um, Why not? Men's Health um, commissioned a piece from from somebody and uh, who I know, and um, he was asked advice. It's was, was like an advice column. And this person wrote in and said, hey, um, I just, I feel really bad because I'm only attracted to, to people who, you know, I'm a man and I'm, I'm only attracted to people with vaginas, but I don't have anything wrong with being, I don't have any problem with being with a trans man. And I've been told because I'm, I'm with trans men and cis women, that makes me bisexual. Um, but I don't know how to tell people that I, I'm not interested in being with someone who has a penis. What should I do? And the response was, that's correct. You are bisexual, even though you're only attracted to biological females and uh, you just have a genital fetish. So turned this completely normal thing, which is being a heterosexual man, into this weird Frankenstein monster. But the word fetish, identity. I think the, the the word fetish is probably being used in a more like clinical or more like 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 academic way. I too, I mean, I'm the opposite, right? I'm a gay man. I want to date people who have a penis. That's fine. No problem there. I and if somebody was like, oh, you know, you are 
you know, if somebody said, oh, you know, you have a penis fetish, I would be like, yeah, 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 that seems right. Yeah, I like, I like dick. That'd be fine. <laughs> Whatever, I don't see what the fucking problem is. The nonsense. Um, but I want to stress, just because I brought up an example in the, in the trans issues doesn't mean that trans issues are the only things that have been taken mm -hmm. over by that. LGB issues have also been taken over by this critical extremist movement that is dangerous um and 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 so have, have women's issues feminism and and anti-racism it's a it's a much bigger problem than than just the trans movement mm -hmm. and in my experience when they're talking about critical when he's talking about crit he's talking about critical scholarship critical theory uh the one that got in in big like you know people were talking about hell of was um, critical race theory but it's another dog whistle about the frankfurt school and um and uh social uh, social marxism or a uh, fucking social oh shit fucking and people are actually now i forgot the fucking term this, this, this cultural this marxism fringe minority i don't do well in the heat everybody um it, what, uh, let's talk about lgb issues that have been you feel have been taken over um uh give me some examples of that He's like, well, I can't give you any names or any specifics or tell you anything that really actually happened but a friend of mine once how is that? How is that ideology um, affecting thinking about LGB issues? I don't. I don't ever chop off the T. They've they've been there the whole time, like in the the the, the, the fight for like gay rights and in gay gay spaces, gay space, gay men, gay men spaces, women spaces, trans people have been there the whole fucking time. So I don't know what these people are fucking talking about. Um, um, sure. Well, I the the same sex marriage. No, no. But I mean, the funny thing, my lord, Ines, <laughs> and the funny thing about that is, I just brought it up, cult, cultural Marxism, like fucking two minutes ago, and then it just fucking it fucking escaped to my brain. It like fucking leaked out my ear or something. <laughs> it's so hot. Is well, it's not that bad right most, now. Um, key example, but uh, you know, as I said, um, well, folks have have opposed that all along, and they and they they still do. Um, that's not good. Um, but also they, they think that, um, the liberal approach to anti-discriminate discrimination legislation is too moderate. Um, they mm -hmm. advocate, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion or critical social justice measures, which are, um, which are aimed at equitable or equal outcomes as opposed to equal treatment. Um, between I want to talk about equal changes, outcomes real quick. I want to talk about equal outcomes or putting your, let's say putting one's thumb on the scale of the outcome <clears throat> as it relates to opportunity. If let's say you and I, whoever you are, we both uh, have a kid, both have a kid next month. And uh, let's say uh, you are gainfully employed and uh, a homeowner and um you know your partner you know you and your partner your your income is like 250 250,000 dollars a year let's say and you live in a what they would call a smart part of town and um two cars and when the baby's when the baby's born uh, one of you gets to decide maybe i'll stay home with the kid for a year or two and then let's say i have a kid well there's just one of me i don't make no 250 a year so and i would have to figure out a, a situation for you know, grabbing uh, like a two bedroom apartment, which I could probably do. Uh, but then I'd have to go back to work. So I'd be working during the day, doing a day job. And then I'd be doing this at night to cover the bills. Nobody else around there. I'm like, how does this work? What does, what, like, how, 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 how do we then suggest that the, the, you know, the other person's child, the hypothetical and the, my person's child <clears throat> are going to have anything close to equal opportunity in the world is antithetical to the liberal value of equal treatment under the law and and um, results in discrimination against people on the basis of sex ironically it, they're 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 literally advocating systemic discrimination just in reverse um and, and against people straight are people familiar with that in the in the case of uh of anti-racism but it's it's also a problem when it comes to sex and um and and sexuality and uh you know i'm a bisexual man and so uh, it frustrates me to see people needlessly complicating the subject of bisexuality by trying to redefine sexual orientation in terms of gender identity as opposed to Wait, what? Uh, the, the liberal approach, which, which, but like, yeah, the gender identity, it's not, it's, it's baked into the cake. 
who and what, who and what like and by what I don't mean like people is what, but like what parts of the body or what sorts of um, things you like. The gender is part of that. To defining it in terms of biology and science. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's particularly, um, so not just because of the trans stuff, but the, um, the redefining of um, gender and sexuality. Um, I think that's taken place because, partly because um, there has been um, a, a jockeying, there's among many people a jockeying for victimhood status um, because um, claiming to be a victim can get you sympathy, can get you money if you have a nonprofit organization or if you are an activist to make your cause seem more pressing. Um, and it can also, uh, there's a kind of moral kudos, which is, uh, which is also kind of attached to it. Um, and, um, sexuality is more gameable than race in that regard. You know, I can't declare myself to be Japanese, but I, I can declare that I'm, I could say that I was bisexual or, queer, which is even more vaguer and more non-committal. What the fuck? Actually, like, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and say if this lady moved to Japan and lived there for fucking 15, 20 years, she'd, I'd be fine to Japanese, because that's where she fucking lives. I know that doesn't necessarily mean that, but like, what if she moves there? I don't know. It's fucking, who cares? Who cares? Um, and, um, I, um, and then I could claim that I I have some kind of minority status as a result. And it's a theory what? that I have, which I was discussing recently with Rasid Khan and Zoe Booth, that one reason why gender and sexuality issues have become particularly uh, salient and I think have gone in a particularly insane direction in um, my native Scotland Um and oh, shout out to Scotland! They're hella. Scotland's hella cool on this one. They're like, whatever, whatever, mate or lass. <laughs> also in Canada, um, or to a lesser this explanation holds to a lesser degree in Canada. Canadians are completely bonkers. No one can compete with them in that. Um, but one reason what? is because there are so few people that it, those are both countries, such white, overwhelmingly white countries that it's very difficult to uh, have some kind of status competition on the basis of race. Certainly in Scotland, um, uh, I am, um, there are very few people who are um, non-white. You know, when Scottish men take their shirts off, it increases the albedo effect of the earth and therefore it fight, helps us fight against global warming. What? What? Are, what? Are... Um, Light is reflected off the Yes, 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 we, well, she's just, you know what she just did? She just told on herself that she thinks the people that are watching her show don't know anything. White surfaces, those big drum-like, absolutely China white bellies um, that we have in abundance in our country. So just a shout out to uh, us for um, For being white? Shout out to us for being extra white. What? Global warming. Not me. I'm half Indian, <laughs> um, but the others. And so if you, if you want to get into these kinds of status games that have been so incentivized on the left in recent years, um, one way to do that is just to claim a, a, a non-standard sexualized identity. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what? I, in, in, what the fuck? 2016, I went to, um, and, uh, do they uh, think that people don't still get discriminated against for being like queer, um, you know, which, whichever version, whichever particular version of that someone is, you think people, they, they think people still aren't like being like, Hey, who all going to be there? Like if there's like a house party or whatever, young people, like particularly young people, if there's a house party. It's a, who all going to be there? That means one thing in, um, in like a black community, but I imagine who all going to be there also. If you were a queer person, you might actually want to know who are all going to be there. But actually, that just means nobody's coming to your party. <laughs> if you tell somebody you're having a party, so they're like, who are all going to be there? Nobody's coming to your party. Um, but there's a, there's, a, there's a way in which they're, they're just, 
they, they like are forgetting the other side of this that they think that like all of a sudden no everything's fine now for queer people nobody there's no discrimination against them my god now all the white people just want to be queer so they have something to fucking say that they're discriminated against for so that they could be popular what organization or an event put on by the obama administration um in dc and i witnessed that firsthand i mean boy that was almost 10 years ago now uh but already there was this insanity where the everybody on stage they're just competing with each other in terms of who has the most oppression points and if you were a cis white man even if i mean i don't know if there was a single straight person in that room but just being Mm -hmm. male and white meant that you needed to shut up you know to the point where people people would exaggerate the the amount of native american in their family line or something like that just oh people always did that now people always did that everybody always did that everybody always did that that fucking just shut up that's just white people just white people like everybody does that opinion would be listened to it's 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 fucking stupid people should stop doing that i wish Mm -hmm. i could say that it's only a problem in lgbt activism but sadly it is it's all over um every human rights cause has been appropriated by this critical ideology i agree i mean i wouldn't have a problem with people defining themselves if they weren't using that to claim um state to claim status or and to claim uh, i think these people are just they just don't get invited to parties i think i think they're they think that they think that that nobody likes them because they're not cool and it's not because like nobody likes them because they're not cool. They think it's because they haven't been queer enough to get invited to things or something. I don't fucking know. These people need some friends. Their, that their view should be listened to more closely and that they should be more exempted from critique. Uh-huh. Um, in itself, I don't have a problem with somebody just really wants to be Native American and maybe they have that in their DNA and maybe not. Does it really matter? You know, if you have, well, it depends what they do and how they, cause there's the, the fucking, there's hell cringy people. Like I'm one 16th native American. I'm like, oh, what does that, does that mean to me? I don't fucking, why are you telling me that? It's a weird flex too. I mean, like it's cool. Like if, you know, if your grandmother was uh, from one of the tribes or whatever, and you were close to your grandma, that's fucking cool. You got some cool, maybe cool stories about your grandma, things you learned about history from your grandma, but just announcing that you're one eighth or even a quarter like native, like who, shut the fuck up. Who cares? One thirty second. If you're one thirty second Native American or not at all, does it really matter? I think it doesn't matter. As, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, if you're into that culture and you want to preserve that culture, I'm happy to see you as Native American. I don't care. But, um, and I'm also happy to see you as bisexual or queer or whatever, even if you are ab- absolutely intact in your sex life and inclinations, completely heterosexual. I'm fine. If you want to claim that identity, that's. Fine. Well, that's great, lady, that if you, but like, but, <coughs> but like, lady, I am gay. <laughs> right. I'm, I just am. I'm sorry that y'all had to. Y'all had to act for a long time like it was fucking weird, so we had to make a word for it. And now it's like a, a cultural identity with some history and some anger and some, you know, a bit of righteous indignation about the past. Sorry, I guess. Totally okay by me. Um, if I ran any parties, you could come to the parties. It's fine. I believe in an inclusivity. It's only when you are saying this means you must listen, you must shut up and listen to me. And I'm right. The default thing is that I'm right. And that never works. People don't, I don't like think people do up. that. People will not shut up. I mean, you might find people on Twitter doing that or like, I don't know. Like, are they, like, do they, have they had any experiences talking to like, people maybe over 35 who have uh, some like have spent time in activist communities and are doing like work in these have they ever talked to those people or are they just talking about like somebody on twitter saying just shut up old 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 white man <laughs> go fuck yourself <laughs> go, you know, go to the bear bar you weirdo get out of here like is that what they're talking about people just tell them to shut the fuck up fun to end um, they just oh, get resentful. A lot of well, people somewhere. do. Yeah. Mm. Um, in in, in left wing activist spaces, 
um they absolutely will du- dutiful um straight white well, male allies what do you uh, does he it, like i'm just wondering does he spend a lot of time in left-wing activist spaces like what is he talking about because this could just be a guy that like the other gay guys don't like and that sucks, actually. Like, everybody should be, you know, you should be able to make friends in the community, right? But this might just be, like, this is just a guy that they don't like. Because he's fucking unlikable or whatever. I don't know. Who fucking knows? Uh, just sit there quietly and um, clap and snap. Well, if somebody's giving a presentation, I guess, suppose so. But, I mean, otherwise, like, does this guy think people, does he think that, like, all we do is, like, struggle sessions and have, like, like salons where we just all, like, fucking hold court like it's fucking like fucking gay toastmasters and shit like what does he think's happening um unfortunately in fact um we we've looked into the specifics of this at qm um for a piece that i wrote called uh, deconstructing wokeness and what's remarkable is that the percentage of the u.s population for example which are genuine believers in critical social justice ideology is substantially smaller than most people would think given the amount of but that's because people probably believe in fucking parts of parts of what that parts of I mean, i'm not even sure what he's describing here but people whatever he's describing people probably believe in parts of it and don't know people probably probably believe the whole thing and don't know what it's called influence that they have in society it's actually about six percent um but there is a much larger group of people who i i call the dissonant liberals which are people who profess liberal values um and don't necessarily really understand how anti-liberal wokeism is so he means like most liberals <laughs> it's, fucking, it's all the it's all the all the gay guys at the fucking gay toastmasters that he got doesn't get invited to anymore those guys they kind of go along with the orthopraxy of liberalism even if they don't what the fuck is the orthopraxy like why (laughs) this is so funny because they do this thing a lot of them they do this thing where this is clearly for like a lay audience but then they use words like orthopraxy which i'm sure some people know the definition of and i could probably if i i could wager a guess at it but I don't know why they do this. The oxy of it. And if we can just persuade those people to, to stop b- being dutiful allies of the woke and to stand up for their own liberal values, wokeness would disappear almost immediately. Mm-hmm. Another yeah. reason that the, the woke has so much influence is because they're mis- um, disproportionately represented in partisan left wing parties where. Um, the, 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 did you, the left. It's disproportionately represented in partisan left wing parties. Did you know that? This guy's a fucking genius. He figured out. <clears throat> he figured it out that your bowling club is full of bowlers. Only a very small minority of people actually vote in um, partisan primaries in the U.S., for example. Um, and so a. Uh, a minority of the population could make up uh, something closer to a plurality in in a in a partisan party. On the other side, mm-hmm. you see the same thing with um, Trump voters. Um, the, the Donald Trump, uh, the first time he was nominated, um, basically won with a plurality of the vote. Uh, even literally, that's like how the time people. To be their nominee. That's how people generally win a primary time around it's quite different because he's almost an incumbent since he has been president before um and gets all the the benefits of incumbency in that in that respect and that's actually not unusual historically speaking but um his his initial um winning of the nomination was because a, a plurality of a minority something like 30 percent of americans are registered republicans only about half of them actually vote. In That's Republican, just called a presidential primary. Um, it's always a plural. And they, about it's very rare that any of the, the the candidates, unless they're the incumbent, that they get fifty percent of all votes cast plus one in a primary, like in all the states combined. And that's how we ended up with him as the Republican nominee. So you, the same phenomenon is happening now with with woke on the left. That's a really uh, astute way of looking at it. I think. I mean, it's always true that. Uh, unfortunately, one reason why getting liberals together is is a constant frustrating herding of cats um, 
is uh, is because people are uh, more motivated to uh, generally more motivated to speak up about something um, to go to a primary or even to a general election are more motivated to write threads on Twitter or um, call into radio talk shows. I don't. Is she literally going to say that she's going to use a lot of words to say that people who are interested in politics do the politics stuff? I think that's what she's going to say. Exist nowadays or write comments on YouTube videos or make YouTube videos or whatever it might be. Um, People who have very extreme opinions tend to also be more motivated and very often there's a high correlation between they're often unemployed also or underemployed. Oh yeah, that's that's oh my god. Listen to this There's fucking losers on the internet talking about politics. I didn't I didn't know she was doing that. She fucking threw a curveball there. Um which uh we discovered in Argentina that Javier Millet recently um said that people who were blocking the roads, um, who were protesting on the roads, it's called a piquete in Spanish, uh, blocking the actual road, that he would uh, suspend their social security payments for three months. Uh, whether or not you agree with this as a policy, it was interesting to see that the protests almost immediately stopped because most people at those protests are on social security. Those people with jobs don't have, don't have time. Uh, Okay, so the social, this one's weird. This one's fucking crazy because the, the, they're like, oh, these people worked all their life and now they're uh, getting the social security benefits that they were promised when the money was taken out from their taxes. Fucking losers. <laughs> My fucking God. Is there anybody these people don't fucking shit on? So far we've got <clears throat> just people who post on the internet about politics, which is probably both of them. And now we got pensioners. Um, Not even pen, yeah, the people, um, retired so the, people. There's people who worked all their life and they're retired now. There is always this natural, um, this this natural kind of impetus towards ex- the extremes, which we have to keep on pushing back against. Um, yeah, uh, that's a great uh, segue into me answering the other question you asked, which is about why queer majority. She's a terrible interviewer. As a publication was founded. Um, The name has multiple meanings, queer majority. Uh, One of them is actually just that bi people make up the majority of the LGBT community. And um, yeah, and they, they, okay, I mean, what is so far that makes the most sense? Yes, yes. Though you would think that the bisexual would be the largest number because that would include like people we might call hetero flexible, right? People who are mostly straight, but you know, every, every once in a while they'll go out and have a good time with somebody like. Of course, it's going to be the largest group. Most, really all other LGBT organizations are run predominantly by gay, um, some lesbian and some trans, but bi people, despite being the majority of the LGBT community, tend to be kind of an afterthought. So some of the reason is that a lot of bi people, because they were uh, able to uh, have relationships with somebody of the opposite uh, sex, gender, uh, they were able to blend in better. So as a group, they may be the largest group, but they may just because of that history there, they may be the least like politically active. I'm I'm not even sure there was like, I mean, obviously there was, but like by the nineties, women being by was hot. Organizations. And I I think part of the woman was hot, I guess it's, this is all, it's all very, uh, Deter- uh, situationally um, situationally complicated. reason why is because of the wokeness. Um, bi people are seen as literally sleeping with the enemy, right? The cis heteropatriarchy, right? Wait, what? Um, and, and we're- No, and, I and fucking fact, never, I of, never, per- I mean, I heard people make j- joking about that. Of gay people even suspect that we're actually secretly straight or secretly gay, one or the other. Um, mm. They don't want to accept that, that um, some people have- well, such- I think you're fucking, you're lucky. Because you, you look at all the options. You're bisexual. You could cis men, cis women, trans men, trans women, um, people who are gender nonconforming. Just fucking whatever. Parts is parts. Let's go. 
um, freedom and flexibility in their That's attractions. Great. Um, so we just wanted to have an LGBT publication where, you know, it was, was by run and, and, and owned and operated. <laughs> so Wait, isn't this, uh, one of isn't this identity things. politics? Another this is identity um, politics within identity politics, um, is related to what you just said. If, if people are familiar with the term, the silent majority. So, um, queer majority in this there sense be, means that's funny. <laughs> that the majority of people we're standing up for the majority of people, which support I've had a lot of bisexual people who fucking rights, but we do not, think that's very um, funny, support the extremism that's being pushed in the names of LGBT people. So that's another meeting. And then the last one, which uh, can take us into a, a point that you brought up about, um, stolen valor. The last one stolen is, valor. Um, oh, bisexual crap. people are not trying to do stolen valor. Get the fuck out of here the most controversial claim we're making which is that a uh, majority of people are queer in the broadest sense of the word queer which we do not merely mean lgbt but we also mean people who do not conform with um, social norms and and attitudes around sex and relationships in general so for example we've swingers had pieces about polyamory um most polyamorous people are not um are not gay um but uh, polyamory is still uh, an, an issue that's related to sexual and romantic freedom that um, in, impacts the lives of a lot of straight people. Um, you know, stay at home dads. There's still a lot of stigma against men. Okay, so that's just that. That's stupid that there's stigma against that. But this is the, now. Now you're just now you're just reaching. You're reaching pretty far now. Now you're reaching pretty far. Now you're now you're. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you're reaching for, but this ain't it. And not being the breadwinner and, oh, you know, um, aren't you a cuck for letting your wife earn the money, et cetera. Uh, yeah, there, there are all kinds of issues. And, and, and so one, one way of moving away from the stolen valor form. Uh, so gay people were probably people nice to stay at home dads before everybody else was. But that doesn't, like, what the fuck is he talking about? Um, queerness is to instead uh, take a liberal approach of, of where, where it's about integration, integration into society. Mm -hmm. and, and part of integrating is just don't have to have to realize, hey, we're we don't have to integrate this thing. There are always, there's always been single dads or stay, or I'm sorry, stay at home dads. I don't integrate them into society. They're already fully integrated in society. That means fucking wifey makes enough money. The dad can stay at home with the kid. They're, they're, I would, sir, those people are just absolutely fully integrated into our society. We're all individuals. Um, we all uh, benefit from living in a Maybe his husband. pluralistic society that um, values our, our rights as individuals, and um, straight people are part of that. So we have lots of straight writers. We put out lots of content that's of interest to straight people, um, pieces about BDSM. We had a piece uh, um, by an older woman who's in her 70s but still very sexually active, and, and she just she wrote a piece. You know, th These are things that I wish I had known about sex when I was in my 20s. It was kind of a guide for how to have a better sex life while you're young, that kind of stuff. But because we're bringing in a lot of stray people who are reading this content. So if you have a possible. guide for how to have better, I don't know if I don't, I don't know, it doesn't seem, doesn't seem fucking great. Oh, here's how to be better at sex in our weird sort of turfy fucking magazine content about LGBT issues and, and it's it's part of just getting past this us versus them uh, way of thinking and 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 moving toward a future where people don't really care what your sexual orientation is that's the mm -hmm. ultimate goal is getting to a place where it doesn't matter I think it's it's interesting that but that's like um, a that's a place that's to, not probably going to get race for example I think we could really uh, I could imagine the point I think it totally matters about. like Because you would find out if you like hit on somebody, they're like, oh, I'm not attracted to men. Is he calling for the abolition of gender? Um, we dispense with labels altogether. Can be quite useful to have some statistical data sometimes to know, oh, there's a, there's a specific problem in the Somali community or in the Bangladeshi community or whatever it is with this type of crime or this type of economic problem um that can be just having data is always useful if you want to what this. is she talking um, about why does the data example have to be like immigrants be criming but, but i could imagine I mean, this is coming collab. to a point at which we, we just dispense with it all together and there there are people like me who actually find it quite difficult to say what race we are in a, a genuine way um, <laughs> um but 
Uh, when it comes to sexuality, the labels can be really important because you do want to know, at least in I believe so, romantic yes. and sexual situations, you want to know whether you stand a chance with a particular person or not. Um, and occasionally you may want to know whether you can feel safe with that person or not if it's some situation of potential danger. Like what? a friend of my, one of my best friends said that he, it was very late at night and he was, had to, got into a lift where there was only a woman there on her own. So he immediately flamed out, darling, I love your handbag to sort of make her feel better. <laughs> flamed out. You just called us flamers. You just, she, she just called it. I haven't heard that word. I haven't heard it described in that way in such a very long time. Reassuring. Um, so I think that there are, but mostly it's in potential uh, romantic and sexual situations, which can actually be pretty useful to have the label and to know, okay, this guy who I, who I fancy, but uh, he is gay, so I, I, won't go and pursue, I won't pursue that. Um, or actually he's bisexual, so maybe I could pursue it, um, et cetera. I think that that's useful. It's probably especially useful for exclusively gay people um, to know who, who their potential sexual partners are. Um, so I kind of feel like that label will be, those labels will be there forever. Um, so yeah, I agree with her. One of the things that I really like. Except I didn't like the flamed out part. That just seemed a little weird. Unnecessary. Unnecessary callback to uh, old timey uh, uh, bigotry. Magazine is that you um, continually emphasize that protecting sexual rights and freedoms for adults um, is important for everybody, um, no matter what your sexuality. And um, I, I think that's absolutely true. Up here comes the save the children um, part. That of course you can uh, fight for specifically LGBT issues that primarily affect LGBT people, but the um, the kind of a um, more liberal and permissive attitude towards sexuality um, is generally, I, I, I agree with you that it's generally beneficial. Um, do you think that there are situations in which it is, it is not socially beneficial? Do you have any sympathy with uh, conservative concerns about, about it, overly permissive um, attitudes towards sexuality? Oh, yep. Here they go. They're here. They're they're pivoting to save the children. That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I I do think that conservatives are right to be worried about the excesses of the critical social justice left and the woke left. And so, insofar as they associate, you haven't even told us what, anything so, about it, except that I guess they don't like you. Actual liberty um with that movement um to use the example of, of same-sex marriage again um if they believe for example that lgbt activists are hostile to the nuclear family right yeah, but, but they're just uh, going to say that like, whether or not they believe it because that's what they've been saying the whole time you stupid fuck the woke very much are um if they believe that we are coming for your kids and we're going to try to indoctrinate your kids and mm -hmm. Um, but they're going to say dodgy. they're going to say that about us, no matter what. They're fucking going to say that about us, and it just it's gonna be, depending on which way the fucking wind is blowing, whether or not they're going to say the Jews are helping us. I don't know what to tell you, it's just what they're going to say about us. All Apollo Free Area or whatever. Um, I think they're quite right to be worried about that. Um, but I n understand your question to be deeper than that, and 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 asking me if I have any sympathy with conservative um, concerns about liberalism going too far. Um, and no, 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 uh, no. She asked you, she was, <clears throat> she was leading, trying to lead you down a specific path. It's, she wants you to go uh, fucking full satanic panic. Sexual, sexual liberalism. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking for example, about, um, um, Conservatives' concerns about drag queen story hour and about um, 
I, I mean, I'm a strong supporter of sex. Watch this guy just be like, I don't see what the fucking problem is with Drag Queen Story Hour. He's not going to do that, though. But watch him do that. That'd be great. That'd be unexpected. Sex education in schools. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can see that there can be a fine line between sex education, kind of sexualization of children. Um, and by that, I don't just mean. Oh, ma'am, ma'am. But we have like professionals, people who are like academics who've spent their lives studying uh, childhood development. <clears throat> They've already thought about this, actually pedophilia or something adjacent to that. I mean, also uh, encouraging children to label themselves sexually too early. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, I I think there's a lot of concern about- about Uh, I usually don't do this during the podcast recording, but we did start late. I'm star, I I don't know what you're talking about. Are you Eric Weinstein's fake account? Yeah. Um, I, I. I, I mean, this is mostly a question of framing, um, but, it, you know, the, the traditional liberal approach to issues like that would be to say, hey, this needs to be a conversation between individuals and parents need to have um, rights uh, when it comes to ra- um, raising their children. Uh, I, I would I put their kids in private school, not take them to fucking drag queen story. I don't know what to fucking tell these people to, in te- to teach kids, um, even even if they're not taking a, a woke approach, even if it's just a liberal approach. Uh, I can understand why some conservative parents wouldn't want the state coming in saying, no, your your children must learn this. Um, well, that's what school is. Though. Of course, the liberal answer to that, too, is, um, well, is you go here and you get graded on whether you learn these things. That's what school is. Is it perfect? No. Is it new? Absolutely not. You know, you can put your kids in in a, in a private school, um, right? Uh, when when the state is involved in paying for your kids' education, um, they have some say in in the nature of that education. Mm-hmm. I do think that's true. I think, for example, it's good that public schools can't indoctrinate kids in in religion. Um, in the U.S., uh, I understand in the U.K. they have uh, faith schools um, that. That strikes me as a, a bit illiberal, um, but you know, at the end of the day, it's also it is also a parents paying for the education indirectly through their taxes. Uh, it's not 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 everybody. Farewell, well, leftward, leftward. Uh, people on the podcast. I'm I'm talking to the people in my chat. The same amount. We started late, so it's um, a little loose. So, yeah, you know, we live in a. Plus, it's hot. My mind is. I think my brain melted. See, and it has to be a conversation. And what person A thinks is appropriate for a 12 year old is not the same thing person B is going to think, right? Um, in my experience, sane people are not interested in sexualizing um, teens who are, you know, not actually sexual, like maturing sexually yet, like preteens or um, that's that's not good. Um, I could see the benefit of having young children learn, for example, that some people have two moms or two dads and that that's OK. But I also understand why some conservative parents may not want them to learn that. I'm, well, but why fucking okay? I mean, that's because they're fucking idiots. This is not an ought. They're, they're being taught an is. Would encourage them to come to uh, to terms with the fact that they they live in a modern society and that their kids are going to meet people like that someday, even if not now. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, um, the, again, the liberal approach is people. We should debate it, and we live in a democracy. We can. We can go to parent-teacher conferences and express our opinions, and and you always have the option of taking your kid out of public school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, this is such a related topic, but um, talking about the the queer. Yeah, she she really wants you to do the fucking the the, the satanic panic, dude. Georgie thing. There's been a um, according to polling, there's been a huge increase in the number of young people who are describing themselves as LGBT. Uh, and particularly, uh, who are describing themselves as bisexual. I think that's the largest. That's the largest increase, right? Um, and- oh, he, he, he's like the bi's are the most people, and now he's going to have to fucking say it's bad somehow. I think at the yes, same that's time, yeah. um, I think um, so. I think the sexlessness of Gen Z has has diminished quite a lot. Um, but some of that was due to the pandemic circumstances, the pandemic. But and I got hell laid during the pandemic. Having their sexual debut uh, later. And I do get the feeling they're not as debauched as we were back in their day. Um, well, kids these days are too woke, um, but also not debauched. At the same enough. time, um, 
so I, I want to ask how much, first of all, um, mm -hmm. how much you feel the increase in people um, identifying as LGBT and particularly as bisexual is reflects just greater societal openness. So these are people who would have been bisexual anyway, but they wouldn't have admitted it or maybe even realized it because of their clo more closed uh, minded nature of society earlier, or how much this is um, st uh, stolen valor, if you like, um, or if, if you even consider it stolen valor, um, or, uh, you know, honor by association, um, or how much it is kind of um, a sort of social contagion, that this is what it's cool to call yourself. Not that there's anything wrong with being bisexual. She just called it a, there's just always the fucking, it's the same fucking thing forever. It's the same fucking thing forever. We're, we're, it's a social contagion. That fucking, yeah. Come on, lady. <clears throat> Some people are gay and bisexual and trans. And um, as time has gone on, societies have become more uh, accepting, and so more people are willing to come out, and that's all that's happening. And there's some ways in which it's going to be generational, and there may be times where you get a big old sad because <clears throat> things are progressing at a, a rate faster than, than you think they should, I suppose. Um, but to what extent do you think it's a genuine shift in people's sexual orientations and behavior and to what extent is it fashion and is it okay if it's fashion um <clears throat> that's a great question uh i'd like to knock the stolen valor thing out of the way first and then get to the i don't know what they're talking about what do they mean stolen valor broader <laughs> conversation um <laughs> You know, you actually put it really well earlier when you said, who cares, as long as you're not trying to argue that because of my identity, you must accept my opinion as true and you are not allowed mm -hmm. to express yours, right? So if you take standpoint epistemology out of it, um, the stolen valor goes away. Then you just yeah. have a person who's... <laughs> right? Maybe, cool, man. Exactly. Like galaxy brain. ...exaggerating the amount of attraction that they have to someone of the same sex for fashionable reasons or whatever, right? Fashionable Damn. reasons? That's what people yeah, not just David Bowie of. My, oh no, he's just fashionably gay. That's my friend. When he got older, he only dated women, but by all accounts, he does seem to have um, boinked a few dudes in his day, so I think he was probably bi. <laughs> uh -huh. Might have been closer to the straight side, but I think he's still... I'll, I'll, I'll count him on my team. Um, <laughs> but yeah, in, in terms of how much of it is real, that's a great question. So the first it, thing it, it is, and he's not going to answer it, first of all, because she didn't really ask it in any sort of coherent way, but also because he's not going to answer it because he doesn't have to. As you said, uh, it's mostly a matter of people coming out as bisexual. A lot of the conversations about social contagion have focused on particularly on young females who are coming out as as trans men. And it does look like there might be a certain degree of social contagion involved in that. Oh, so the part I don't like is where the social contagion is. The, the part I do like is where there isn't any social contagion. What? So the biggest number of the people that are uh, coming out it, it, it being queer in some way, and uh, Gen Z, as they call it, those people are 30 now, some of them. Um, <laughs> the biggest portion of those are bi people, but if there's a social contagion, it's over here in this much smaller proportion of people because I think that shit over there is icky. Not that there aren't, um, you know, females who are realizing at a young age that they, they really are trans. Um, I don't doubt that. But I, I do think that there is some evidence of the data to suggest that there's some social contagion involved there. And I think it's Which quite data? appropriate for parents to um, play a, a, a good role in their, their children's lives. If you're talking about minors, um, it's perfectly reasonable for, for parents to be skeptical about that and talk to their kids about it, make sure that that's really what they want. And, and I think it's, it's appropriate for a liberal democracy to debate whether or not minors should be transitioning at all. Whereas of course, when you, when, when it comes to um, consenting adults, I don't, I mean, do whatever you want, you know, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, right? Minors um, are impressionable and that is something that we should worry about. All right. But, uh, so, but the buy, the ones that come out as uh, buy are fine actually. That said, trans people are a tiny minority of the LGBT community. Um, uh -huh. The vast majority of, of us are bisexual. 
and the most common uh, form. You can, of this guy's dumb. You can, like somebody said earlier, you can be bisexual and trans. What do you? The vast majority of the LGBTQ community is uh, cis or uh, mostly cis presenting people. Yeah, but that's not what he said. He said most of us are bi. He's like really interested in that part. Duality, which, as you pointed out earlier, is a spectrum, is what you might call heteroflexibility, uh, which is primarily heterosexual, but just a little bit attracted to the same sex. Um, those, those, those are bi men. People or like those are that, bi people. Uh, tend to be the ones who maybe experimented a little bit when they're younger and hornier, and then when they get older, they tend to settle down with someone of the opposite sex. There's nothing wrong with that, and it does qualify as bisexual, according to the scientific definition. It does qualify people who are really things, dude. straight. We're sure glad that that fuck, there's some, somebody who fooled around a lot in college and then met somebody and married them and spent the next 25 years with them gets your fucking permission to be bisexual. Thanks, dude. Fuck yeah. We'll know exactly what I mean. You mail him a fucking a, a Hallmark card and a toaster. When I say, hey, buddy, are you going to have sex with another dude? And they would never even think of it. Absolutely not. The thought <laughs> just grosses them out, right? So those people, those people are 100% heterosexual. But there Maybe that's his pickup line. Maybe that's why I hate that people don't like him. People who are just mostly straight and mm. they, they, um, they they enjoy sex with the same sex every now and then, but it doesn't mean they're going to marry someone of that of that sex. And and um, <clears throat> right, so they're so bi bisexual. Is it possible if you let if he lets them? I don't know. Is he? I guess he's letting them be bisexual. That's good. Good for him. Of Generation Z is actually LGBT, scientifically speaking. Absolutely, it is entirely possible because of uh, of, of we actually have recent evidence about this. Um, we published a piece about uh, a study of monkeys. Um, Rhesus macaque monkeys. Wait, wait what the he fuck? He said a funny name, uh, monkey business. Bisexuality pays off. <laughs> and the, the teaser was, uh, I new remember primate. That yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the teaser was, uh, new primate research shows the evolutionary benefits of swinging both ways. And, um, what, what we found is, uh, um, among these monkeys, um, uh, homosexuality, exclusive homosexuality is uh, basically non-existence. It, we weren't able to see any examples of lifelong exclusive homosexuality, but um, bisexual behavior was very common, very common. Um, 28%, absolutely. No, that's 100% within the realm of what's normal according to nature. And not only that, but the bisexual behavior correlated with having more success in procreation, partially <laughs> may, maybe because My uh, God. You know, they like, had a bond with their Buddies who would this would, is would, would help them guy, and they'd get. You, I think this guy could bring um, the leftists and the shit libs and the fucking angry centrists together because he's annoying. He's fucking annoying. Or fights. Or he's a really bad interviewer. There's there's speculation as to why, but the correlation is well established from that study. And um, after that, all right, I can't take a minute more of this. I'm going to cut the podcast off a little bit early. Uh, live viewers, don't go anywhere. Obviously, we're just going to keep the lights red. I just need to. I just need to move on to another piece of content. So, uh, people listening on the podcast, I don't know how the fuck you would be on like Spotify and have gotten through all that. That was hot garbage. But um, you can get this whole show for free. Actually, go to eplex.store or uh, Patreon.com/slash Ecoplex. You can download the whole thing. It'll be free. While you're there, consider signing up. Obviously. Um, this has been the Intellectual Dollar Tree. Uh, we'll be back with Red Light in just a couple minutes here. This is uh, Boomers by Periscope.